Okay, class. Today we're going to go through section 3.1, the last part of it. Uh, the last part of section 3.1 goes over finding the mean from a frequency table. So recall when we had a frequency table, it was a summary of a list of data. And we just organized it and made a table out of it and recorded all the numbers within intervals. So I'm going to show you uh, an example from your textbook. So we're looking on page 95. Uh, number 29. So let's look at the book. Let's go to the exercise. All right, so I'm on page, I'm on page 90, 95, number 29. And so this one's talking about age of best actresses when Oscar was one. So notice that we have our uh, intervals, our classes, and we have our frequencies. And so we're asked to find the mean. Okay, so how do we find the mean? Um, a frequency table. Okay, so yeah, that's a good question. So do we do it normally? We just add the frequencies and then divide by the total number of intervals that we have? Mm, no, we can't do that. We can't do the same thing as we did with numbers that are listed because we don't know what those numbers are. So if we knew the original list of our data, we could actually add up all the data and then divide by however number numbers that we have. But here we don't. We just have a summary table of uh, the data. So we don't know from, for example, this 29. I don't know what those numbers are. All we know is that there are 29 numbers that range between 20 and 29. So they could all be 20s, they could all be 29s, they all could be scattered within the 20, 29. We don't know. We don't know how, what those numbers are. So we have to find the mean a different way. So let me just copy the table and I'll show you all how to find the mean. All right, so here's my table. And we're gonna use a unique formula to determine the mean. And so that formula, let me show you where it's at in our book. It would be on page 87. Here it is. Here's the formula. So there is a formula. So notice it's X bar. There's our, our notation for sample mean. So we have X bar equals, and then you have the summation. And then in parentheses, you have F times x. And then at the bottom, we have a summation of f. OK, so we need, to, we need to dissect this formula. OK, so let's tackle it step by step. So I know this summation means the sum. So it says find the sum of f. So we're doing the bottom. I'm going to show you how to do the bottom. So basically, the bottom is saying it's the sum of all frequencies. OK, so to do that, that's easy. All I have to do is add up all these numbers. All these, the sum of all these numbers will give me the bottom part of my formula. So if I add it up, I believe that that is going to be 87. I'm going to double check. 16, 3, 5, 2, 87. All right, so I know that the sum of my frequencies is 87. So that's the bottom piece of formula, 87. OK, so now i got to figure out the top. All right, so to figure out the top, I'm going to have to extend my table. So this column here is the frequency table. So this is, this is the F. That's what that F is, and that's what that F is. What is X? Well, X is going to represent the class midpoints. So I'm going to make another column, and I'm going to label it class 
midpoints. That's the term that we use in section 2.1. So as you recall, the class midpoints represented the in-between numbers, right? So do you remember how we found the, the midpoints from each of these intervals, right? So we add it, we have to add them and divide by two. So I'm going to add and divide by two, and I'm gonna do it for all the other classes. So you add, divide by two, add, divide by two. We're adding, adding them, adding the lower and the upper, and divide by two. Eighty plus eighty-nine divided by two, and I'm going to list my results here. All right, so let's do the first one. Parentheses twenty plus twenty-nine. Close. Divide by two, I get twenty-four point five. Right, and if I do it for the rest. It should be pretty simple, right? But I can use my shortcut because my class width is going in tens. That means my class midpoints are also going to go in tens. So it's because this, the first one was 24.5. I know that this is going to be 34.5, 44.5, 54.5. Sixty-four point five, seventy-four point five, and eighty-four point five. And if not, you don't believe me, you can go ahead and add divide by two, and you'll see that you get those numbers. Okay, so this x is that number. Now, remember, in order of operations, you have to do the parentheses. So, what's happening with the f times x? Well, it's being multiplied. There's a dot which means I'm gonna to have to make another column and I'm gonna multiply each of the F times the X to each row. That's what that means. So let me get my blue, wait, my purple. And I'm going to show you that I'm going to be multiplying my F times the X. So I'm multiplying 29, Right, times 24.5. And then I'm gonna multiply for the next row 34 times 34.5, 14 times 44.5, three times 54.5, five times 64.5, one times 74.5, one times 84.5. And I'm gonna put my results in here. So I'm gonna go backwards. This is easy. 84.5, 74.5. Now I'm gonna need my calculator to compute. Five times 64.5. 3 to 2.5. Next one, 3 times 54.5. 163. 0.5. Now I got to do 14 times 44.5. 623. 34 times 34.5. 1173. And 29 times 24.5 is 710.5. Okay. So these numbers represent F times X. So now I did my parentheses. So now I can do the outer part of it, which means the sum. So I'm going to add this column 
and that sum will go above the 87. So let me add them up. 710.5 plus 1173 plus 623 plus 663 .5, 3, 2, 2 .5, 74 .5, 84 .5. So I get 3,151.5. That number will go right above the 87. Okay. And now I'm going to divide 3151.5 by 87. Thirty-six point. Two, two, four, blah, 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 one, one, three. I'm running out of space. One, three, seven, nine, three. I don't think I have enough space to put the three, but anyways, right? Now, that's the whole, that's the whole actual um, approximate answer, right? But I've got to round it. So do you remember where do we round? Remember from the previous section 3.1, where did we round our mean, median, mode, mid-range, range, standard deviation variance? Well, it all depended on how the data, the original data were given. So on this table, we base it upon how are these intervals given? Notice our upper, our upper is a whole number, lower is a whole number, which means that I have to round this one to the tenths. So my answer for this one, so I want to have to round this one to the tenths. So my answer becomes 36.2. 36.2. And that's how you find the mean from a frequency table. Now you can try the second one, uh, number 31 for practice, because 29 was on your homework and 31 is also on your homework. So try 31 on your own and then check the answer in the back of the book to see if you got it right.